The first thing you'll do in Photoshop is either open a file or create a new file. So let's go over how to do both. You may see a start screen that looks something like this. If you wanted to open an existing image, you could go to the open button on the start screen and click it. Or if you wanted to create a new image from scratch, you could use the create new button on the start screen. But there's another way to get to these same commands from anywhere in Photoshop. So even if your start screen isn't showing, you can always go up to the file menu at the top of Photoshop and choose new or open from there. Let's go ahead and choose open from the file menu to open some existing image files into Photoshop. This will launch your Mac Finder or your Windows File Explorer, where you'll navigate through your file system to an image file and select it. This is my least favorite way. You see, we are artists and we like to do things visually. Look how small the icons are. So I would do all of this in Adobe Bridge, which I'll show you in a later video. Let's stay in Photoshop for right now. You could select one of the practice files that come with this tutorial as I'm doing, or you can select an image of your own. If you want to open more than one image at a time, hold the Command key on Mac or the Control key on Windows and just select another image file then click the open button. Both selected images open into Photoshop's editing workspace, which is called the document window. At the top of the document window, there's a tab for each open image, and the tab tells you the name of the image. The name is based on the file name. If you want to see another open image, just click its tab. So that's how to open existing images. Let's leave those open and talk about how to create a new image from scratch. You might do that when you want a blank canvas, where you want to draw or paint, or maybe you just want to place multiple images on it. So this time, go to File Menu, and let's choose New. That opens this new document window. Photoshop comes with a lot of blank document presets that you can start with to find the one that works for you. Then select a document preset where you can customize your new document by typing in your own values, like the width and the height, and also resolution and color space. First, select a category of documents from the top of the window. Photo, print, art, illustration, web, mobile, film, and video. I'm going to select photo. Next, choose one of the preset sizes in this section called blank document presets. If you don't see the one you like, there's an option here to view more presets titled view all presets. I'm going to select this preset, the landscape orientation 4x6. Now over on the right, all the details have now been set up for me, including the width and the height. If you decide that's not exactly what you want, you can type a different size into the width and height fields at any time. Any of these other settings on the right could also be customized too. But sticking with the presets kind of takes the worry out of having to figure out the technical details at the beginning. And these settings can be changed later in Photoshop if you need to. So to finish creating a new document, click the Create button and your new blank document appears in Photoshop ready for you to add photo, text, or maybe a shape which you'll learn to do as we continue through these videos I'm making. Yes! Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you the major Photoshop interface elements. You can open any image you want. The first interface element to get familiar with is the document window, which is right here in the center of the screen. This is where you work on your images. Over to the right of the document window are the panels that have a variety of image editing controls. There are more panels than just those you see in this panel column. Some of the panels are hidden behind others. For example, here we have a panel group of the color panel and the swatches panel. If you want to see the swatches panel, you can just click its tab and that brings it forward so you can use it. You can go ahead and select a red swatch here in the swatches panel and that color will be applied when you use other color features like the brush tool. There are some panels that aren't open on the face of Photoshop. To open one of those panels, go up to the window menu and choose from this list of alphabetical panels that do not have a check mark. For example, you can choose the histogram panel, and that opens the histogram panel. Currently, the histogram is showing all color channels separately, which is great for critical color review. You can close it by the double pointed arrow here. Another important interface element is the tools panel, which is located to the left of the document window. It's this long vertical bar here. If you're not sure what a tool is, you can just hover over its icon, and in a moment, you'll see the name of the tool and a brief tool tip. To select a tool, just click it. There are more tools than you see on the face of the tools panel. You can click the disclosure triangle and hold any tool like the horizontal type tool here that has a little triangle at the bottom right corner and you can see a flyout menu of related tools. So if you want to add text, but not in a horizontal orientation, but rather in a vertical orientation, you can just slide down to the vertical type tool in this flyout menu, select it from there. Now each tool has a number of controls called options 
and those are found in the next major interface element, the horizontal tool options bar up here across the top of the screen. The important thing about the options bar is that it changes depending on what tool is selected. So because you have the vertical type tool selected, you see options for text, like this font size menu here. Keep your eye on the options bar while I select another tool. You can click on the brush tool, for example, and now the options have changed to offer brush opacity and blend modes, the two most important things you'll use aside from the brush size adjustments. Now let's go ahead and apply an option. One of the things you can often want to do when you have the brush tool selected is to change the size of the brush tip. And you can do that by using the brush picker option. You can click that option to open the brush picker. And then you can move the size slider in the brush picker over to the right to increase the size of the brush tip or to the left to decrease it. And then you can click in a blank area to close the brush picker. Now you can move into the image and you can apply some paint. If you change your mind about that paint stroke or whatever you just did in Photoshop, you can undo it by pressing the common keyboard shortcut for undo, which is Command plus Z on a Mac or Control plus Z on a PC. The last major interface element is the menu bar at the very top of the screen. And here you have multiple menus with lots of controls. For example, if you want to close this image, you can select close from the file menu and you can go ahead and close the image without saving since we haven't made any permanent changes. So that was a super quick look at the major features of the Photoshop interface. Now you'll use these over and over and the things we covered were the Photoshop document window, the panels on the right side, the toolbar on the left side, the tool options that run across the top, and then the menu bar that runs on the very top. In this video, I'm going to talk about zooming and panning. At the very end, I'm going to share an advanced tip of how to do this with keyboard shortcuts. Awesome. You see, zooming and panning are ways to navigate around an image. You will zoom and pan around your images often in Photoshop. So let's go ahead and practice working with the zoom and pan controls. You can open the image from the practice files that I've attached with the link in the description or in the course itself, or you can open a large image of your own. Zooming means changing the magnification of an image, zooming into it to make it bigger. Now you may want to zoom in for a closer view of part of an image, or you may want to zoom out to see more of an image on your screen. The most straightforward way to zoom is to select the zoom tool located at the bottom of the tools panel right here. Then go to the options bar for the zoom tool where you will find a plus icon for zooming in and a minus icon for zooming out. Let's start with the plus icon activated, which is the default. Then to zoom in, move into the image and click. And each time you click, you zoom in a little further. To zoom back out to see more of the image again, go back to the options bar and this time select the minus icon and then click several times in the image to zoom back out. If you want to zoom in again, go back to the options bar, click on the plus icon and then clicking on the image to zoom in again. Now you may get tired of going up to the options bar every single time you want to switch between zooming in and zooming out. So here's a shortcut that'll help you. When the zoom in the option bar is active as it is now, you can switch to zooming out by holding the Option key on your keyboard if you're on a Mac or the Alt key on Windows, and then click, and the image will automatically switch you back to zooming out. And then release your finger from the Alt or Option key, and it automatically switches back to being ready to zoom in again. So you can click in the image to zoom in again. And if you are zoomed in, you can use the Fit Screen option here in the Options bar. This comes in handy when you're zoomed in like this and you want to get back to a view of the entire image in your document window. Just click the Fit Screen option and the entire image itself will automatically fit itself into your document window. Another option is this 100% option. Clicking this as soon as you enter the 100% view of the image, which is the best way to view an image when you're checking it for sharpness or you're doing detailed retouching for output. You can't see the whole image on the screen like me with this image, although you may not experience the same thing if you're working on a really large high resolution monitor, like a 5K monitor. But if you're on a small laptop screen, then you won't see the entire image most likely. So if you want to see a different part of this image with the zoom level, you're going to need to move the image around in the document window. That's called panning. And it's done with another tool, the hand tool. This is different than panning with a camera where you're using a slow shutter speed and you're moving your camera at the speed of your subject going across your screen so the subject stays sharp and the background has this nice blurry linear feel to it. That's panning with a camera. I'm talking about panning inside of Photoshop. Yes! So you're going to go back to the tools panel and you're going to select the hand tool, which is here. 
is just above the zoom tool. You will then move into the image and notice that the cursor has now changed into a hand icon. All you do is click, drag, and move the image in the document window to a place that you want to see, and then you release the mouse. When you're done checking the sharpness here, and you want to go back to the view where the entire image is on the screen, you can go up to the options bar for the hand tool, and there you will see the same fit screen option that we had for the zoom tool. So you can just click fit screen in the hand tool options bar, and that takes you back to see the entire image in your document window. Now, another way to zoom instead of clicking continuously, go back and get the zoom tool in the tools panel. Okay, now click and hold in the image and it will zoom continuously. You can zoom all the way in to see the pixels that are the building blocks of the image in Photoshop. The size of these pixels can affect the image quality of a print, which is why image resolution is such an important topic, especially for printing something. I'll talk more about this in later videos. But remember, we are not resizing the image right now and we're not changing its resolution. We're basically just zooming in and out of the image. Now go up to the options bar and click fit screen so you can see the entire image on your screen. Now here's some advanced tips. Let's say you're working with another tool, maybe the brush tool, and you're painting in a small area and you don't want to switch out of the brush tool over to the zoom tool just to zoom in. There's a shortcut you can use instead of the zoom tool, and that is just hold down the command key on a Mac or the control key on a PC as you press the plus key on your keyboard. Every time you do that, you will zoom into the image. If you want to zoom back out, hold the command key on a Mac or the control key on a PC and press the minus key on your keyboard to zoom back out. Another important tip is you can temporarily access the hand tool by holding down the space bar to pan around an image. And then you can hit command or control zero to fit it back in screen. Command control zero is my most favorite one. I use this all the time with every single image I open in Photoshop. It's just so much quicker. All right, so that's an introduction to zooming and panning, showing you how to navigate your images as you're working on them in Photoshop. And you can close this lesson without saving. We didn't do anything significant. All right, take care. If you like this video, make sure you whack it, smack it, and crack a lack it. Yes! Hey, what are you still doing here? It's over. Actually, all kidding aside, I hope this video helped. And if it did, consider subscribing. I like subscribers. That's awesome. What? You just took one in the jugular, man. <laughs> Whoa. Yes! <laughs> Hey, you stayed to the end. You know what that means. You're awesome. I'm talking about you. Now get out of here.